men may not complain about the temperature of an office, whereas women perhaps are more likely to do so. Yes. You could say, because perhaps they're wearing less clothing, men are still wearing, you know, much like myself, mm. suits, maybe even ties. Women in summer tend to wear less. However, do, are they right to complain, despite what they're wearing? They are, because the system was set up, calibrated, not around an average human, but around a 40-year-old, 70-kilogram male wearing a business suit. And your two factors are, you know, your insulation-y thing, which is called clothing, or clothes they call it, and it's set at one for a man in a business suit, so that's multiple layers, and for women it's about 0.7. The other thing is the MET, or how much heat you're generating, your metabolic rate, and men are heavier and generate more heat. Women way less and carry a slightly higher percentage of fat, so they generate 0.7. But presumably this model that they came up with was, what, back in the 1960s? 1960s. OK, so that was the average male then. Male, not female. Because there are obviously far fewer women in the workforce at that point. Well, there were a lot of women working in offices, but even though there'd be more women in the secretarial positions, they didn't get taken care of. And I'd like to apologise to those women over the last half century that they got ripped off. And so, yes, it's set up for a man. And you'll often find women saying, I'm actually cold, and the guys are saying, I'm fine. Different body mass, different clothing. OK, so it hasn't changed it in hasn't the past changed. four decades. And or, we should or... change it. OK, based on what? How do you want to get an average between men and women? Because you're saying, yeah. for instance, women, their metabolic rate is um, lower because lower they've than, got a lower men. body mass, yeah. Okay, so they're not burning that heat then, not generating heat whereas men would. Yeah, so one yeah. way would be simply to have it halfway in between. Another way would be to have all of the men directly under the aircon vents so the wind blows on them and the women get all of the corner offices with the glass further away from the aircon. That sounds fair as well. OK, maybe we're, we're taking the wrong angle on this. Rather than adjusting the environment, we should be adjusting ourselves ah. in what we're wearing. Yeah. Now, the now, clothes that we wear. Yeah. Surely there are some fibres that would make it sort of easier to uh, uh, adjust your, your temperature in an office environment. Sure. It turns out that the clothes that we wear are in fact virtually opaque to infrared. They block practically all of the infrared. People are now working on trying to make clothes that are invisible to infrared. The heat just goes straight through your clothes and you don't have to crank the air con so cold. That might work inside, but wouldn't that be sort of detrimental outside if you were sort of fully, more fully exposed to, you know, the sun or the cold, for instance? OK, so then you'd have to have clothing that would adjust for the light level. So we, smart we're hitting, clothing. Smart clothing. Well, yeah, of course we go for smart clothing. Which could present problems if it's infrared material because you can obviously have instruments which can see through that. Instruments like every single smartphone. So at our place, if the... So, so those, those tricks where you're actually taking a photo and, and you can actually see through clothes like an X-ray. From you know, the those... comics in the old days, X-ray <laughs> specs, right? Yeah. So that's a problem, obviously, they have to <laughs> overcome. So we... <laughs> it's like not, you know, a little embarrassing in the office, obviously, if that would be the case. But you're saying they're working on these sort of fibres where, so in the future, we will be wearing clothing which will adjust to the temperature or, or regulate our temperature more easily. That's right. They'll allow the heat from our body or allow the cool to come in and that way we don't have to crank the aircon up so much. And aircon in America alone is 5% of their total electricity budget. Mm. Imagine being able to just drop that down by half, by 20%. It would make a huge difference. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to be taking fashion advice from you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr Carl, thanks very much. Thank you, Dr Andrew.